Whenever we are learning to find or exploit or prevent different types of security vulnerabilities, you always want to understand its root causes and what's actually happening to the application when that vulnerability is being exploited. So today, let's talk about an extremely common vulnerability, the cross-site scripting vulnerability. We will talk about its mechanisms and how you can spot it in source code. Cross-site scripting happens whenever an attacker can execute malicious scripts on a victim's browser. So a lot of the time, an application will use user input to construct web pages, right? For example, let's say that a site has a search functionality where the user can input a search term and the page will display a message containing the term at the top of the results page. If a user searches ABC, then the source code for the related message might look something like this. And if that application cannot tell the difference between user input and the legitimate code that makes up the original web page, attackers can submit executable scripts and get that executed by the victim browser. These malicious scripts can then be used to steal cookies, leak personal information, change the site's contents, or redirect the user to a different malicious site. A possible scenario that this might happen is when the user input is submitted via a URL parameter, like if the application also allows users to search via URLs directly. So if an attacker can trick victims into visiting this URL, then the payload will become embedded in the page that the victim is visiting and that will in turn make the victim's browser run whatever code the attacker would like it to. And so before we go on to looking for cross-site scripting in an application, there are a few code review concepts that you should probably understand. Source, sync, and data flow. So in a code analysis, a source is the code that allows a vulnerability to happen, whereas a sync is where the vulnerability actually happens. So take command injection vulnerabilities, for example. A source in this case would be a function that takes in user input, and a sync would be functions that execute system commands. And if untrusted user input can get from this source to a sync uh, without proper sanitization or validation, then a command injection vulnerability exists in this application. A lot of common vulnerabilities can be identified by identifying sources and sinks for that corresponding vulnerability and tracking this data flow from these appropriate sources to their corresponding sinks. So the vulnerability that we'll be looking at today is cross-site scripting. What are the sources and what are the sinks for cross-site scripting? With all cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, we're essentially looking for user input being used in the server's output that would then be displayed back to the user. So let's start looking for cross-site scripting candidates in an example application. We are going to fire up the code analysis tool that we're going to be using today called Ocular and then import the project that we are analyzing. We will be analyzing a Java project called Tarpid Java, and we will be feeding that war file to Ocular. After I import the project, I like to run a command to make sure that I have the project properly loaded, right? I typically run cpg.method.name.l for this purpose. This command will look for all the methods defined in the project, extract their names, and then list them one by one. So this is essentially a command that lists all the method names in the project. Let's try something else now. Let's list all the identifiers in the application. So this means things like local variables, globals, and class members. Let's start by looking for the sources of cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. So we are looking for user input, right? So a good way to do that is to look for identifiers that are of the type HTTP servlet request. So we'll filter the this identifier list by its type name, 
With Ocular, you can do string searches with regex. So here we're essentially looking for identifiers whose type name contains the string HTTP servlet request. And so what you can see here is that it gives you essentially a list of identifiers that contain input from HTTP requests. And we can define this as our source function. So next up, let's take a look at sync functions for cross-site scripting. For syncs for cross-site scripting, we will typically look for anywhere the application displays output to any user. So we could look for things like HTTP responses or prints to log files and so on. And so to keep things simple in this demo, we can look for all calls to print functions in the application. And so specifically, we are looking for data getting passed into the print functions as arguments. So we'll add argument here to specify we're looking for print function arguments. And so the final step of our analysis is that we can tell Ocular, show me all the places where a source can reach a sync in terms of data flow, and then we'll pretty print the results here. And so here you can see that Ocular came up with all the places where a source function can reach a sync function via data flow in the application. Let's look at one of these data flows to verify the potential cross-site scripting. So what the data flow tells us here is that the request identifier on line 83 of insider.java will eventually end up getting printed on line 87 of insider.java as a parameter named x. So when we go into the source code here, you can see that the code is indeed leading to a cross-site scripting vulnerability.